The very first step to creating a video game is creating concept. Conceptualization is the process of forming an idea for your game. In this step, all you'll really need to do is take notes and sketch drawings. No coding is required. In order to go a steady and organized path in this step, you should come up with a plan. Come up with one big idea to follow and add important details. What kind of game is it going to be? Will it be a game with a story behind it? Or is it going to be a game like Cubefield, where it's a non-story minigame? Will it have characters? Can you beat it? Is it multiplayer? These are just a few questions you should consider when you're in the process. Also, consider details about yourself. Come to recognize your skills, free time, and the budget you will put into your game. How experienced are you with making games? If you're not so experienced, you should start out simple. Don't try to make a Minecraft or a GTA of a game. Until you can start to get more skills in making a video game, you should be basic. When working on your game, don't be a feature creep. A person who keeps adding too much unrelated or irrelevant details up to where their game is just a pile of trash. You always want to stay organized and on subject. If you want to add more details, make sure they will properly fit into your game. So, go make sketches, write notes, create checklists, and take pictures. Just gather your ideas up and create the topic. Just stay organized and don't overwork yourself. The second step in the process is making art. Making art is very critical to creating your game. You'll need different frames for every part of your game. Health bars, weapons, characters, buttons, backgrounds, objects, everything. This step should run quite smoothly if you did a good job with concept. This is a step where having plenty of notes and a solid concept comes in handy. However, like before, you don't want to try to go off subject. This is a good time to add more detail, but you still have to follow the same idea. Don't change too much. You should make your art to add to the game, not take away from it. You can make the art as beautiful as you want, but it shouldn't drag the player's attention away from the main points of the game. When you're animating as well, focus on traits and features. For example, if there is a scene by the ocean and it is windy, there should be waves. If the character is slow or fast, you should animate them to be that way. When animating effects, don't add so much to where the player can't even tell what's happening. When drawing or animating, you should use references, which will help you learn how to draw something better, and so you can have a visual aid. If you want characters to be realistic-like and to move like a real human, look up anatomy and walk cycles so you can see what you need to draw. If you need to see how fire and water move, look up GIFs or videos. You can also use real-life objects to help. Just practice! If you can, try getting a tablet where you can draw and animate. This might make work a lot easier. Be sure to find a good art program too, probably one that other animators or artists recommend. Also, make sure you have a comfy workstation. You probably would not like to be hunched over for a while. Be relaxed too. Play music and eat snacks. You work a lot better when you're in a good mood and in good posture. The third step in the process is coding. Although coding may seem hard, about anyone can do it, so please, don't feel discouraged. There are plenty of open tools for a game maker, a vast supply of pre-made utilities to use in a programming language, GUI-based software packages, animation tools, and scripting tools. Some of these softwares can be Flash, Unity, and UDK. You must choose a language. There are hundreds of programming languages to choose from, but a few that other people suggest are Adobe Transcript and Java. Jose Jean, an indie game developer and computer scientist, says, Java is a pretty friendly language to start and learn with, though the language to make the game is entirely dependent on what tools they want to make use of. The number one rule here is to not feel like you can't do something. You shouldn't try to avoid the step. It is very important. Apparently, as long as you know middle school level math and you can type words into Google, you could do just fine. The more pre-planning done earlier, the more prepared you are for the step and the less work you have to do. The final step in the process is distribution. Distribution is a process where you publish and share your game. It's one of the biggest reasons your game exists, and one of the most important steps to accomplish. After all, didn't you make your game to share it? What's the point of the game if no one knows about it or can play it? You want to let people know your game even exists, so you have to advertise. Give a simple description, but don't give away the whole plot. 
You want your players to be curious so they can find out how to play the game and how it ends. You want them to be excited for the game. Be sure you're talking to the right audience too. Don't target an audience of grown-ups if your game is about learning the alphabet. That would honestly be really dumb. Having social media might be very helpful now. You can make plenty of announcements and links about your games, and it's a good way to spread the word. But be careful, some guy might come around and steal your ideas. If you're lucky, you can ask a popular person or company to distribute your game, and if you're incredibly lucky, they'll do it for free. After advertisement, you must publish your game. If you want, you can make it free. At first, you probably wouldn't want to do this, but think. If you can get your name known among bi bigger publishers, they can contact you and say that they would like to republish your game through their network so you can make money. There's also the option of using another platform to sell your game digitally. A very much recommended software could be Steam, the biggest platform currently, which many say is arguably the best. Well, that's the end of the process. I hope this has helped you understand how to create a video game, and I hope you have fun with the game. With that, this video is done.